Hey guys, welcome back to Changing with the Tides. I know it's been a while since I filmed the video, but I'm ready to sit down with you guys and get rolling. So, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the first beatitude and kinda I'm just gonna give you a rundown about what it is and like how we can live it out in our everyday lives. So I hope you enjoy the video. It's my lucky day. Okay, I've broken this video down into four different categories. What is the first beatitude? What does it mean? Who is it? And how we can live it out in our everyday lives. So, the first beatitude is obviously, I mean, maybe you all know it, maybe some of you don't, but that's what this video is about, to kind of teach you and help you learn more about what it is. So the first beatitude is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, what does it mean? Um, you might not realize this, but God is in our lives to protect us, meaning he's always present, whether we realize it or not. Happier are the people who realize that God is here to help guide and save you when it comes to making decisions throughout your life. I know for me personally, this year, this past year has been a little bit on the, I mean, it's been interesting. It's been keeping me on my toes, hypothetically that is, but like, God is always present, and we may not always realize it, but he's always there throwing little signs at us, um, doing little things here and there to help us realize that God is real and heaven is real, and to like help us better understand why we are Catholic and why it is we practice um, and are so giving of ourselves to God. So, the next part is, who is it? Um, the poor in spirit are those who feel a deep sense of spiritual destitution and comprehend the nothing, their nothingness before God. The kingdom of heaven is theirs because they seek it and therefore find it and abide in it. Now, what does that mean? Because there's some very large words in there. Um, the kingdom of heaven is obviously heaven, and we may not always... Um, pick up on it but like I said before God is always throwing little signs at us like for me um butterflies will fly around and butterflies are a huge thing because they were my great grandmother's favorite so my gram always always saying how if you see a butterfly just think of Graham and say hi so that's pretty much what I do whenever I see a butterfly and just little things here and there like that like if there's a penny on the floor or a, yeah a penny I like think of my um other great grandmother and things like that just little signs here and there that god is real and he's very helpful to the world or to us i should say so the next part of that who is it statement is to this virtue is opposed to the pride of the pharisee which caused him to thank god that he was not as other men and to despise and reject the kingdom of heaven there must be emptiness before there can be fullness and so poverty of spirit precedes riches and grace in the kingdom of God. Again, a lengthy description, but I'll kind of break it down. So, obviously they were talk referring to the Bible a little bit about the Pharisee and how he, he thanked God because he was not as other men, meaning he was not being mirrored or like he was his own person. So, um... But that I want to kind of pinpoint that part where um, there must be emptiness before there can be fullness. So what does that mean? There must be emptiness before there can be fullness. Emptiness is when you feel like nothing, like you kind of hit rock bottom and you're struggling so much and you just can't seem to get your bearings. Well, let me just clue you in on something. I've, <laughs> I've been there a couple times and it's okay. I mean, pe we all struggle and that's totally nor I mean not necessarily normal but like it's life and it happens and we all kind of well some of us can get tend to get sucked into that well I don't see, feel God and I don't see God so is he really there and honestly like that's okay but at the end of the at the end of all of that at some point for me personally I came to the realization that God must be there because without him I wouldn't have the awesome life that I have. I wouldn't have such amazing parents who helped me endlessly. And honestly, I wouldn't have the rest of my family, like my brother and sister, who again, are amazing. But I, it took me to getting to that point of like, 
struggling to feel God's presence and struggling with a lot to realize that God's there. You just have to kind of incorporate him in your everyday life. And for me, I started praying the rosary and doing my daily devotion book every day because, I mean, I would go through phases of doing it here and there, but I never really stuck to it until I basically was just crying every day in a hot mess. And yeah, so I, f I feel you if you're struggling with feeling God's presence, but just know that if you find little ways to incorporate him in your everyday life, it will make a, make a difference. So moving on, <laughs> now that we've kind of covered on that topic for a little bit, um, the last subcategory that I'm going to talk about is ways we can live it out in our daily lives. So there are three different ways. And the first one is just pray every day and not maybe not for yourself but for other people too so like for me like I, I think I said before and if not I could be wrong but for me I pray every night before I go to bed so I'll be laying down on my pillow turned off the tv I'm all my lights are off and before I kind of close my eyes to fall asleep I'll just I'll kind of thank God for like all the blessings he's given me and how amazing my family is and how I hope that they're able to stay safe throughout this pandemic because let's be real, this pandemic freaking sucks. But like, I just kind of pray for my family and pray for all the ones that I love and my friends that they are able to stay safe and stay ho hopefully sane during this whole pandemic. So that's number one. Number two, a person who gives up their free time to volunteer. Now I, I definitely talked about this before. I think I made a whole video on it. So maybe go back if you want to figure out ways that I volunteer. But volunteering has helped me tremendously. Like I love volunteering. I love just helping others where I can and doing little things here and there to make others smile. So for example, I was I teach CCD obviously right now it's virtual, which I think is for, great because like kids should be able to learn about God and not have to be forced into going to physical CC, especially when it's not always safe right now. So I'm super thankful that I'm able to teach CCD over Zoom right now. It's really fun and my kids that I have are really interactive with it, so I love it. Um, but I do like other things too, like I've been involved, uh, I've been volunteering with different nonprofits and things like that. So if you can find a way to volunteer, I promise you'll feel so like it'll just give you this feeling of awesomeness and greatness and that you're able to help someone else do something that they may may be struggling with so the last one way we can work it into our everyday lives is a family who works to ensure that god is a part of their everyday lives so uh, obviously life can get crazy and it can get very easy to get caught up in the craziness and the hustle and bustle and the constantly going 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 of family life and working and things like that but as long as you kind of work to ensure that God's always there you'll I promise you'll notice a, a little bit of a difference so ways you can do that is going to church maybe every day if you can or every Sunday or even like praying before your meals, like um, blessing your food. That is such a can make such a huge difference. So now that we've kind of touched all of our categories, I hope that I was able to kind of ho help you better understand what the first beatitude is and what it means and things like that. So I I will see you guys next time, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye, guys. Mwah. It's my lucky day.